Uh, so now that I've got my dry suit on, um, I can't just leave my backpack behind. Um, my plan is to float it along with me. Um, it's not a waterproof pack, so I've got a, um, a, a waterproof dry bag that goes over it, and I'll show you how that works. Um, first, I need to get my pack ready, and I take my hip belt and I'll clip it in as tightly as I can. Then I'm going to turn the pack over <clears throat> and I'm going to put the uh, put this on upside down. I find that it floats better um, if uh, I put the bottom of the pack in first. <clears throat> uh, the only dry bag that I found that worked that wasn't too heavy, this is a really light one. It's actually not um, built for this specific purpose by any means. Um, it is uh, It's actually designed to be inside of a pack with a pack liner. So I guess this is off-label use, uh, but it's uh, it's worked really well so far, uh, and it's lightweight. I'm being careful with the, the bags. Of course, I don't want to put a hole in it. That would be bad. fits just right. And all right. I tried several different systems getting ready for the for this trek and uh, this is the one that seems to work the best. Um, I've got to be careful again because it's um, kind of off-label use, I guess. Um, I have trekking poles. Trekking poles need to break down to get shorter, like so. Um, <clears throat> I do this um, so that I can put the trekking poles in upside down. They have somewhat uh, sharp points, so um, I need to tuck those um, underneath uh, the lid of the pack uh, so I don't have any chance of those puncturing it. We've got uh, two water bottles that fit down through here, like so. I've got my hiking boots. It down like so. I've got the top and this is it. Almost there. Okay, just uh, burping the air out as much as I can. Twist it good and clip it. Rope gets tied here, tied onto my wrist, and I'm swimming. <laughs>